coffee roasters have been on for a long time. They last forever. There's like still ones from like late to 1800s, early 1900s. Like a lot of the, the European ones, yeah, they last a long time. Some of the older ones are more manual. They don't have all of the um, gauges inside of you know the temperatures and the probes. It's more of a you know see, smell, touch type aspect of it, which you know you learn over the years. Coffee is one of those things that the fresher it is, the better it is. So obviously whole bean is the best way to keep it versus ground, but um, I know a lot of people freeze it and even when I go to Florida and see my mom, she'll put her order in, she'll say I want, you know, 16 bags and she'll put every one pound bag in her freezer and pull them if she needs it, but leave the one pound on the counter. I'm originally from the States, so I'm not an original Brandon boy. Uh, I did real estate down in Florida, and my mom and my sister still are down there and they still do real estate down there. It's not my cup of tea. I'm not, I'm not aggressive enough to be a real estate agent, and I got tired of doing open houses on the weekends. Right now I have three stores. So we have the store on 18th Street, the store in the town center, and the store at Brown University. We also have a kiosk that we do all of the weekend games in the Keystone Center. And then we also have a trailer that we take in the summertime to different fairs, so we just got done with Brandon Summer Fair. And then we'll, our next event is until Winnipeg Folk Fest. It originally started out, Jeff and Zeta Dykes, um, I think it was their, his sister had a uh, Forbidden Flavors in Calgary. So she, it was just an ice cream shop. So that's where they got the idea, saying, well, ice cream's great, but it's mostly just a summer thing. So they wanted to incorporate coffee with it. The store on 34th Street closed in February of 2010. Well, they were our franchise and they were also our supplier at the time. So when they closed, there was about two months of period there where we were getting our stuff basically out of Winnipeg. Uh, it just wasn't the same. A lot of our customers didn't like the coffee as much and it wasn't local anymore. For in April of 2010, I bought the roaster and, and Bev, who did all of the, the roast, or a lot of the roasting for Jeff, who was trained by Jeff, took over. She said, well, if you buy the roast, I'll roast for you. So I, I did. So I brought it back to Brandon and brought back all of the roasts that, in our, you know, that we liked and our customers liked and, and control back because when it's, once the supply chain's out of your control, you don't really have a say as far as quality. How I got started roasting was I was working at 34th Street for Jeff and Zeta Dyke uh, part-time in the evenings and started there in 2008 and in 2009, Jeff asked if I'd like to learn how to roast, and I said, sure. And that's, that's how I became here. Yeah. Usually, when I roast a batch of beans, they're roughly 40 pounds that'll go into it, and then it comes out about 30 pounds of beans. And it roast usually takes about 15 minutes to roast a batch. 25 by the time I'm completely done with cooling and from start to finish. So I can usually, it depends on my day, I can do 10 or more batches in a day, but usually stick around eight. And we roast daily, except on weekends. I take my weekends off. Um, funny thing is we never have a pot of coffee brewing out here. Even out with all these beans, I usually bring a travel mug of coffee to work in the morning. Because we get a lot of requests from people that have lived here or have family here that always rave about our coffee and say you can't get anything like this at home. So we have people in, that are either in Regina or Calgary that can't that want it or Winnipeg or out, I think even we have one in Kenora. And we have one guy that came up here and was staying in the Canada Inn and he was building the casino out in Carberry and he's from Mississippi. So he called and wanted to or, order coffee. So. Bev ships them out, I don't think he orders 50 pounds at a time, so. We do most of the businesses in town that get coffee service, and you have to have enough, obviously, employees to make it worthwhile. Um, and it costs a little more than just going and buying Folgers or Maxwell House, so it's for the people that actually like the taste of good coffee. So we supply Lady of the Lake, Ray Firehouse, um, the fire halls, police station. In and around the area, we do 
100 to 130 accounts that we service and deliver to. So it's enough to keep me busy between deliveries and repairs. So we have customers that come in and play cards, you know, Brian and Andy come every day and they've been coming for, I don't know, eight years maybe. Uh, coming to Forbidden Flavors, I, uh, I met uh, Brian through, you know, through a mutual friend and uh, we went and had coffee in different places and eventually we settled here because uh, we, they had booths in here and uh, it was a very comfortable place and then uh, he uh, one day decided to bring his crib board along not too long after we met and we played cards. So he sold the house and he gave all of his possessions, you know, his wife's possessions to the whole church and like that. Today he's leaving to Vancouver. Well, no more trip and nobody to teach me how. I'll still keep coming here, but uh, the, uh, the trip. We just feel so comfortable here. We originally almost embarrassing that maybe three or four times a week. It, it, yeah. Well, my favorite coffee is usually the French vanilla. It's a roasted coffee, not a sweetened coffee. So it's... Uh, I pick the flavored coffee because they, there's no other coffee places, even though you know in other cities that I can find that have a flavor. And um, we seem to like every one except uh, the coconut cream. My favorite coffee to make would be a latte, just because you can practice the latte art. I don't, I don't make a lot of drinks anymore, so it's still fun to do. So, because people's impression when you make it is they're pretty shocked, you know, after having just a standard coffee or something that's not doesn't have a design. I used to make basically my latte art would be hearts for the ladies or more like apples for the guys. I, I wasn't as good as some of my, my staff. I have kids. One of my staff actually made a dragon. It was pretty impressive, I can't do it. For us, it was more about having fun and also for the customer experience of getting that drink. Well, somebody took the time to make something special. I think Forbidden Flavors is unique because we started out as a small local coffee shop. We roast our own coffee, so we take pride in that. Um, we don't do a lot of things like the shops do. We don't do a lot of food. We pretty much specialize in coffee and that's what we do because you can't do everything great. So we try to stay with coffee and that's our key component. We try to be great with that and we try to build a relationship with our customers. So we have a lot of customers that have been there since we've opened. So you see, you know, them for a long period of time, their kids, their grandkids. So you get to know them, especially if you're a long time employee. I went out to 18th Street for roasted coffee beans, frappe, latte too, every flavor just for you, but oh, oh, oh. roasted coffee beans, roasting, 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 roasting. I went down to the cop shop for roasted coffee beans. I went down to the cop shop for roasted coffee beans. All the crooks, they are screwed. Cops are sharp, drinking that brew. But oh, 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 roasted coffee beans. Roasting, roasting, roasting. Roasting, roasting, roasting. That ho, ho, ho. Roasting coffee beans.